Hello everyone. So today we are going to be talking about the adventures or the original sh illustrated Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, I read the first part of the first like collection of stories, which is called The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Um, it's about what 12, 12 little um, stories. Um, these were originally put in a um, uh, magazine called the Strand Magazine, and so um, they're very short, um, about 12-ish pages on average, um, and they're, well, th this one is kind of long because it's in two columns, um, so it took me a little while to read them. Um, they're very easy reading, and they, they kind of follow a set pattern. So, of course, everyone knows about Sherlock Holmes. Um, he's the famous detective who lives in 221B Baker Street. And anyway, he is um, a very uh, analytical man. He knows how to figure out things about people without ever even asking them what's going on with their lives. They just come in and he automatically knows a lot of things about them. And then they tell about their mystery. Um, that's what takes up the majority of these. That was something that surprised me. It's not so much um, about Sherlock's deductions um, that that takes up maybe a like maybe a, a fifth of the story as a whole. Most of it is the introduction um, when you have a new person that you've never seen before um, come to Sherlock Holmes and they say hey I need help with this and he's like oh well what happened and they're like all right and then they go into this long very detailed history of what the mystery is, um, who they are as a person, who everyone else involved in the mystery is as a person. Um, it has a very distinct formula to it. Um, the thing about these is is that they're very interesting mysteries. Like it sounds boring to just have somebody tell you a long story um, at the very beginning of the story, <laughs> but it is like um, one thing that Doyle does very well is crafting a unique mystery with a lot of um, specific uh, things that are like, you're just like, what? Why? Like, I just got finished reading one where a man had a severed thumb. And so, of course, you want to figure out, you want to find out how his thumb was severed. Um, so then after the person talks about their long mystery they have going on and this thing that they can't figure out then it's time for Sherlock to do a little bit of deducing um, sometimes he does this um, you know through putting on a disguise he did that in one mostly he just goes and visits the place and like looks around is like and questioning people and figuring out what's going on and then you know he figures it out and he goes and he tells everybody what happened and everybody's like whoa we never would have thought of this and then and of course it turns out to be true and it's all nicely wrapped up and then it, he explains it at the end and you're like oh well cool um then that's another interesting thing that there's like that that suspense that happens in the middle so you get the the first part the long story and then you get like a little bit of time to try to digest it and try to figure out what went on and then um, finally you get the answer and it's just very well um wrapped up it's the 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 mysteries themselves are pretty straightforward um the, it, it doesn't take any strange like detours there's not a lot of red herrings it's just a pretty straightforward thing where you're like this is the mystery this is Sherlock Holmes little investigation thing he did and then here's the answer um and that's that's really fun you can tell that these were written in magazines because it is so so nicely wrapped up and so nicely packaged um it's a easy reading that you can do you know in the afternoon I can totally imagine the the old dudes in their top hats and their little coats and whatever sitting on the the trolley or whatever to get to work and reading the adventure 
adventures of Sherlock Holmes in the afternoon, you know. Um, it's really fun. It kind of takes you back a little bit. Um, the character of Sherlock Holmes, um, something that a friend and I were discussing is that um, a lot of times, you know, he's been portrayed so much in the, the cinema, um, in, in movies and TV shows um, that are some, some of them are very popular. Um, he's portrayed as much more stoic than he actually is um, especially in these first adventures, um, that he's kind of portrayed in the movies, again, as a person who doesn't really care about other people. Um, and it was interesting to see that that is not the Sherlock Holmes of the, um, of the magazine, of the original stories at all. Um, though he is extremely focused on his work, um, you can tell that he has a lot of compassion for people. And this makes him a little bit more of a relatable character um, and a lot more, a lot more nice to read. Um, he, he just comes across as a, a lot better of a guy. And I appreciate that. And of course, I didn't talk about Dr. Watson very much. Um, he's, the, you know, Sherlock's sidekick. And I didn't talk about him because he doesn't really do very much. Um, they're written from his perspective, but he basically is just there to write from his perspective. That's all I have to say about Dr. Watson. <laughs> But anyway, so that is the original Sherlock Holmes stories. Very good. I would totally suggest reading them if you're up for a nice little easy mystery, easy read mystery. Um, next on our list is Persuasion by Jane Austen. So I will look forward to seeing you guys for that. Bye-bye.